from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louie B. And it's Thai Leader coming in for his first CFL field goal attempt. It's a 35 yarder to give the Tiger Cats the win. There's four seconds on the clock. Thai Leader, the kick, and it's good. Okay. <laughs> the former professional rugby player hits his first CFL field goal, and the Tiger Cats win. How great is that? A preseason game, and we're storming the field. Winning kick with double lot zero on the clock. This is great, man. We're in for a great season, RJ. <laughs> this is awesome. Yes, it is. Tie Cats today for a Monday, May the 30th, 2022. And that call right there, as heard on the Tie Cats audio network, Tig leader hitting the game winner to send the Tie Cats fans home happy to give the Tie Cats a win in their preseason opener on Saturday at Tim Hortons Field. If you were there, hopefully you had a great time. It was a great atmosphere. And if you were listening on the Tie Cats Audio Network, I got some good news for you because Friday's game from Guelph for the first time, the Tie Cats Audio Network hitting the road as we will have the descriptions for you. Andy Fantuz and I will get you set at 6 o'clock on Friday and a lot of great stuff this week leading up to that, including a brand new episode of Speaking with the Enemy. We'll be bringing you Tie Cats Day all week. Uh, Tiger Cats game day tie cats this week excuse me so lots of stuff going on on the tie cats audio network thanks for starting your monday with us as again the tie cats big winners on saturday i don't maybe big winners isn't the right term they were winners thrilling winners we can call it that but you know when these games don't really mean anything in the standings uh, tough to get too excited but that was a great way to end a football game on Saturday night. And we get to do it for real at Tim Hortons Field on June 18th, so make sure you join us then. Coming up on today's show, we're going to hear from the head coach and president of football operations, as we normally do, Orlando Steinauer, as we caught up with him after practice. We'll hear from Dylan Wynn and Braylon Addison, get a couple vets' perspective on what they saw on Saturday. We'll have some Monday morning salutations with Coach Sal. As I was able to catch up with him a little bit earlier in the day, as my day took me from Flamborough to McMaster here. So I was at Flamborough Hills for the Hamilton Tiger Cats Alumni Association 37th Annual Golf Tournament. I caught up with a lot of great alumni, Les Brown, uh, Mike Samples, uh, everybody, Rocky DiPietro was there, uh, Ben Zambiasi. So there was a lot of Great veterans there, and it was great to catch up with a lot of them. We're going to be putting together a couple of great pieces for the alumni and making sure that it's on the Ticats Audio Network because we want to celebrate the alumni as much as we can. Uh, and it was a great morning down there and a great late morning here at Ron Joy Stadium. Uh, as it's a bit of busy Friday, busy Monday, busy Monday for sure, for sure. But thanks for sticking it with us as we really do appreciate that. Uh, but let's hear from the head coach and president of football operations of the Hamilton Ticats. That's Orlando Steinar talking about his thoughts on what he saw on Saturday. Well, never going to complain too much on a win. Uh, it's a CFL game, right? It's a great, it's a great teaching tape uh, overall for the whole football team. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do, but uh, some great individual efforts, some great uh, team efforts at times. And uh, yeah, it's, we got a baseline now, Louis. So, you know, there's lots to learn from, but there wasn't all great. It wasn't all terrible. Uh, everything's being evaluated. I would never say it's it's easier or harder. It's it is just what it is, and you know you can't judge you know every book by its cover. People gotta give be given grace. They've got to you got to see how they play through mistakes and those type of things. But if they're repeated, then you know there's sometimes there's uh, unintentional consequences there. So, but we don't worry about that. We just want to build them up while they're here, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It's gonna be the same answer until we get a bigger sample. I mean, it's one game. You know, I have been able to watch some of the other games to see how it is, but uh, to say, oh yeah, this is what it is. This is definitely, that's, it's too early. You know, it's all predictions at this point. So, you know, as it goes along, there'll be a larger sample and I'll be able to give you a better answer. No, there's there's nobody that, you know, is, is gonna be gone, like one where like the season's over, nothing, nothing like that. So, nothing of real concern. We were actually, you know, I think we came out of today relatively healthy. I didn't see anybody leave that, that, that started practice. 
I thought they came out and, and did well, but you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I want to see them live again. That's going to be the real evaluation. Is is there a jump in the next game? Um, we, we all know that we got to be better in that area, but they know that, and they'd hit the ball really well in practice up to that point. So uh, we'll just see if it's a repeated pattern or if it was a one-off. That is the head coach and president of football operations, Orlando Steiner, as he spoke after practice at Ron Joyce Stadium at McMaster as the Ticats continue their training camp a couple of guys will not be continuing their training camp as missed off the top in news and notes series of transactions announced by the tiger cats today including the releasing of american defensive back trevayon beck american defensive lineman justice reed american linebacker ezekiel barnett and global defensive lineman david eisenyan the big news that's gonna hurt here for Thai Cats fans and the Thai Cats is the six game injured list. Three players have been added to the six game injured list. All three are Canadian, two of them Canadian receivers. National offensive lineman Coulter Woodmansey, national wide receiver Lamar Durant, and national wide receiver Tyler Ternowski all placed on the six game injured list. So, right away, the Thai Cats Canadian receiving depth is going to be challenged as you had to figure both uh, Lamar Durant, a seven-year CFL vet, Tyler Tarnowski heading into his second year. Both guys were pretty assured to make the team. Uh, so a big blow for the uh, Ticats in their receiving core with the uh, placing of Lamar Durant and Tyler Tarnowski on the six-game injured list. Uh, let's stick with the receiving core. Let's hear from Braylon Addison. Here's what he had to say after practice today. It was electric, man. You know, I was looking at the video we posted on Twitter, and uh, even in the preseason, man, Donald's box is always rocking. So um, it was good to be back out. You know, I've been trying to make sure I practice every practice in training camp. You know, just get all the way back in shape, get the camaraderie going with the boys, and um, I'm just having fun, man. It feels good to be healthy again. It feels good to be practicing, competing. So I'm um, just taking advantage of it. Uh, it was good to compete. You know, we've been you know banging against each other in practice all training camp and trying to compete and make the young guys better and. Uh, the vets make the vets better and the vets make the young guys better. So um, it was nice to all put on the same jersey and be able to go out there and root for one another, offense or defense and special teams. Uh, you know, seeing the young guys go down and win the game at the end of the game was super fun. And um, so, you know, it was, it was just fun to all put on the same jersey and be out there, be a team together in one space. Yeah, I think everybody is excited, um, you know, with the, the league and everything being on the brink of a lockout and football being back. You know, we didn't have preseason last year and then COVID in 2020. So um, I think it was a long six months for everybody, including the players and especially the fans. So uh, I think it was exciting for the fans to get back out there. And, you know, like I said, with being on the brink of a lockout and the players obviously we wanted to play. So, you know, both combined groups, the, the players, we were hyping up the fans, the fans were hyping us up. So it was good to get out there and just have some fun, man. It was, it was great. Uh, man, it's tough to, to say that because, you know, we got so many guys every day making plays in practice. And the guys, they transferred over to the game. I saw a lot of guys doing some good things. You know, Anthony Johnson stood out on tape, you know, with the catches. And Keandre Smith blocking downfield. And, you know, Boston blocking downfield. Emmanuel Butler making some catches. So, um, I think all the guys, man, I, I like the fact, I say this, I feel like I say this every year. Um, we come into camp and I'm saying I think we got the deepest group in the league. And then, you know, I say it again every year. So, um, it's been good to just have that camaraderie as a, a receiver group. And, you know, I guess I'm not fit in the room now, but just seeing how deep we are from even the, uh, the young guys coming in and being ready to play, uh, it, it's, it's reassuring for sure. I thought the quarterback play from top to bottom was great. Uh, you know, Dane came in there, he looked like he hasn't missed a beat as we all expected. And then I thought Matt got in there, he did his thing. Jalen got in there, he did his thing. And uh, we, also all, we all saw Jamie go down and lead us to a game winning drive. So um, it was good to just see us hitting on all cylinders. Obviously, we got to clean some stuff up. It wasn't a perfect game by any, any measures. Um, some penalties and some, some missed assignments we got to clean up. But um, I thought for a first preseason after, you know, the short lockout we had and only being together for like five or six days, you know, I thought it was pretty good. That is Braylon Addison as we caught up with him after practice. And uh, one more piece of audio to get to. Let's hear from Dylan Wynn, who came up huge with a big blocked convert in the game on Saturday night. Here's what he had said after practice today from Ron Joy Stadium. Great, you know, the energy was going, running around on the field, it's get everyone to Oski Wee Wee, and it's good to be home. We stayed pretty locked in on the D-line, so my main role after I was out was trying to help these guys any way I can, you know, diagnosing plays, giving little pointers here. We're all hands on deck, especially on the D-line, so 
Um, we're all really locked in. I was, I probably lost my voice more than I would in a normal game. You know, just trying to help these guys, you know, do the best they can. Well, that's that's good continuity on defense. It's something we pride ourselves in. You know, we eat our vegetables, we play the run, and then you earn the pass. So, um, it's just you know, it's an emphasis here, but it's an emphasis on every defense, and uh, we just like to put a money where our mouth is. So. We have some deep talent. We have some deep talent. We have some guys that, you know, are definitely going to make coaches' jobs hard, and that's all you can ask for. Um, great guys on and off the field, but uh, you can't always tell how a guy's going to be transitioning from past or from practice to game. And none of these guys disappointed. They're all kind of gamers, and it was it was great to watch them ball out. I just try to make a play anytime I can, you know, and do your job and run to the ball and, you know, good things happen sometimes. And I was lucky, lucky enough that, you know, you make the plays that come to you and that one decided to come to me and I'm happy I made it. Uh, did you know that you can take that back for two points though if you could have found it though? Well, you learn something every preseason and that would have been, yeah, I need, that's something I need to tighten up. That is the coaching point for sure. I need to calm down the celebrating a little bit. But, you know, I was happy to be back in Tim Hortons during the game. I, you know, ne next time I block one, I'll definitely be locked in. That is defensive lineman Dylan Wynn as we caught up with him at practice at McMaster here this afternoon. All right, time to get to some Monday morning salutations, and that's when we check in with our friend, Coach John Salavantis. And for today's interview, I had to go to him. I had to go to the – I didn't have to. I got to go, as the Ticats would say. You don't have to. You get to. I got to go to the Hamilton Ticats Alumni Association's 37th Annual Golf Tournament at Flamborough Hills this morning where Coach and I caught up, talked a little golf, talked a little Ticats, but we started our conversation with some golf and just the excitement of being back together with the Alumni Association on the course, raising some money. Here's what he had to say. Oh, it's great to be out here and see all these guys that, uh, you know, have played in the years past, et cetera. But, uh, it's, it's super nice to be here in Flamborough Hills. It's a great golf course. They really treat the players well, and, and uh, you know, I'm excited to get started with it. 132 golfers sold out. It's all going to a great cause, and the Alumni Support Fund, um, that's got to make you put a smile on your face, too. Well, yeah, you know, and people don't understand sometimes that the alumni are, are not just out here for fun. The idea is to raise money and give it back to charity in, in the local community. So, yeah, it, it's a good thing to have. Let's talk about that game on Saturday. What stood out to you? Well, the lack of, of uh, penalties was really interesting, I, I thought, you know. Early on, you expect the players to uh, be a little anxious and, and maybe get some uh, bad penalties, but I didn't see that on the Tiger Cats. I, I felt like the first group uh, out there on the field with Evans uh, played very well. Uh, contrary to, uh, to other people's opinions, I thought uh, Harris for uh, Montreal uh, was super uh, in that first quarter, moved the ball directly down the field, put it in for a score, but his timing was there. He was able to time up his throws and make those good throws. And I think with the hash marks where they are, that's going to become a very important part of uh, the new offenses. We just found out this morning Coulter Woodmansey is on the six-game injured list. I know that's not the news we wanted to hear before you hit the golf course, but that's obviously a huge blow. On that point, the offensive line, what did you see? Well, I thought uh, the right tackle, Saxley, uh, did a very good job. He's a good run blocker. He, uh, he extends well with his hands. His feet were good. I saw him pull around the corner and, and lead the, the uh, sweep. Uh, to the outside, so all all said and done, I thought he was a player. Now he got nicked in late in the game, and I don't know his status. Uh, I thought at center, Fontana uh, did a decent job there. I think there's got to be some improvement in that area. But uh, again, Revenberg was Revenberg. He did a great job, and they took him out late in the ball game and uh, rested him, which they should. He's a veteran player. Alden Darby, two quarterback sacks, was all over the field. Uh, obviously, he's fighting for his spot. He was listed as the the backup, but He's someone who I thought made an impact. What did you see from him? 
Well, as you said, he's all over the field, and, and the ability to run is going to be paramount uh, for the linebackers. But we have an excellent linebacker core. What we need is those one or two guys who are going to be able to back that up or in a nickel situation or a pass rush situation be a blitzer. So uh, I thought he did well. Uh, on that note, I thought uh, Adelike did a great job at the free safety position. Uh, and then Katsatonis, when he came in, uh, they handled the secondary very very well in, the, in those areas. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, when we go to Guelph next week, we'll get a, or this week, we'll see what uh, what transpires there. Encouraging to see, maybe not the punting, but the field goals. All four kickers getting into the game. Ty Gleeder getting the the big one, 35 as the time expired. But all kickers going four for four combined. That was an encouraging sign. Well, the kickers, yes. I'm going to give you the kickers. I'm going to I'm going to panic on the punters. I think we've got to do a better job of finding a person who can punt the ball. It's so important now uh, to punt the ball inside that 10 yard line when you have the opportunity. Inside the 15, you're fair in the fair territory. So you can make the ball go out between the 15 and the 10. Ideal situation, make the other offense go the length of the field. You can't shank them. That, that, that's not uh, in the cards. How are you feeling out on the range there? How are you feeling about your game today, Coach? Hey, I got a great team. I don't have to worry about my my swings anymore. You know, the big guys will take care of me. I just kind of ride the cart. Enjoy the round. Thank you, Louie. And that is Coach Sal, John Salavantis, as we caught up with him at the Hamilton Tiger Cats Alumni Association's annual golf tournament and a reminder keep your eyes peeled like and subscribe to the tie cats audio network for special features coming out of this morning uh, where we caught up with a bunch of alumni where they told some great stories uh, so we're going to be working hard to turn that around for you for some great content here on the tie cats audio network speaking of great content we don't have to go anywhere else for tie cats news and notes because we've got tie cats day for you all week Leading up to the game on Friday, hopefully you'll join us then. It is the exclusive home of the broadcast right here on the Ticats Audio Network. I'm back tomorrow for Ticats Day. From all of us here on the Ticats Audio Network, I'm Lily B. Hoping you have a great day.